Okay, so I question the Ravens making the Nelson Aguilar move because it was one that just seemed to continue a trend of getting these receivers that were past their prime. And if you're Nelson Aguilar, you never really had one. He's one of the more bigger, I would say, wide receiver draft busts who's made a couple of plays in his career, but nothing that would have screamed like, oh yeah, this is great. It was just kind of like your typical... Ravens move in a way like this didn't feel like oh we you, like when we signed Derek Mason or when we traded Frank Juan Bolden or signed Steve Smith Sr. It didn't feel like that. It felt more like oh let's bring in Jeremy Macklin. I was gonna say Mike Wallace but Mike Wallace was actually good with us. He had that 1000 yard season so you know can't really take away what Mike Wallace was able to do in Baltimore. It's just that our passing game got way more simple. The older Joe Flacco got, so Mike Wallace didn't necessarily get to show off a lot of his skills, um, even during his 1,000-yard season a whole lot. And, you know, part of me believes that this move here, which is the Ravens actually signing Odell Beckham Jr. to a one-year $18 million deal, as said by Odell Beckham Jr. on Instagram, that Lamar Jackson must be staying. He must be starting quarterback for the Ravens in 2023, because I can tell you this, if there was any trace of uncertainty that Lamar wasn't going to be quarterback for the Ravens in 2023... I think Odo Beckham Jr. signs with the Jets. That was the other team that offered him a contract. It was basically between us and the Jets. And I don't know what the Jets offered him. Probably a one-year deal. But uh, I don't know for how much. Maybe they matched our offer and he thought we'd be a better fit or what. But, you know, it was either going to be Aaron Rodgers and Odell Beckham Jr. teaming up in New York, even though the Rodgers thing isn't official yet. But they're saying by uh, draft day there should be something there and Aaron Rodgers will officially be a Jet then. But this happened literally just a couple minutes ago as of me filming this video where Odo Beckham Jr. took to Instagram to say that he was signing with the Ravens. So the reason I like this one, because I, not that that I've been critical of Odo Beckham Jr. in his past. I mean, he's done some dumb things, that whole thing with the net. It wasn't really funny. It was just kind of like, like, dude, just play football, ignore that stupid shit, you hit a net one time, it hit you in the face because you were throwing a temper tantrum, that was early in his career when he was kind of less mature, and throughout that time, that was when he was always kind of like begging for the ball from the Giants and whatnot, and basically the whole reason he wanted out of New York, and when he got to Cleveland, I think he matured a little bit more than most people give him credit for, because, you know... I think the reason why I was on his side throughout his time in Cleveland when he was kind of, you know, feuding with them and Baker Mayfield was because when they traded for him, they traded for him and even signed him, I think they signed him to some deal after that, to be the number one guy. This is the guy that's going to get the targets, he's going to get the ball, and for whatever reason, Baker Mayfield just never threw him the football. It was always to Jarvis Landry or David Njoku or somebody else that was like, you know, uh, what's his guy's name, Donovan Peoples-Jones. It just seemed like Odell Beckham Jr. was getting frustrated, like, dude, I'm here, I'm open for the most part, and yet you continue to throw to the same guys, like, I'm getting paid to be the number one. It wasn't that he was like, I need 10 targets a game. He was just saying, look, if you're paying me to be the number one receiver, then I need the targets here. If you're not throwing me the ball, how am I supposed to, you know, do the thing the team wants me to do if if I can't get the ball? And that was the one thing I agreed with him on. It wasn't because he's like, I'm the best receiver on the team, blah, blah, blah. He's just like, you're paying me like a number one wideout. But at this point in his career, Odo Beckham Jr. has basically said he he doesn't need to be the number one on a team. He just wants to be on a team that is going to compete and is going to win. And as long as Lamar Jackson is on the Ravens, that's what the Ravens are going to do. And he just came off winning a Super Bowl with the Rams a couple years ago. Granted, he got injured during that game. And that was pretty much, I think, the whole reason he sat out last year was he wanted to make sure, one, the fit for his next team was right. And two, he would be, you know, fully healthy going into uh, the 
next season that he would play, which will be this upcoming season here. So it's an interesting move. One year, $18 million for one year. I really wasn't expecting it to be that much. I thought maybe we offered him $10 million, but um, I did not think we were going to win the sweepstakes. I really didn't because, you know, there's a whole thing of, oh, Ravens are making an effort to get DeAndre Hopkins. Thing is, we don't have the draft picks to get him. We only have five of them, and I know we're not going to give up a first-round pick. And even though we made offers, it just didn't happen. And when we signed Nelson Aguilar, or I said it's just like like part of me believes that the Ravens don't need too many wideouts because a healthy Rashad Bateman can definitely be our number one wide receiver. Devin Duvernay is good in the slot and in other situations. We just needed a savvy veteran to come in and be able to, I guess, coach him up, do whatever, and you know, kind of fill the void with experience there. And okay, you know, I guess Nelson Aguilar will do that, and Odo Beckham Jr. is not going to be the number one receiver, but I can assure you there's going to be moments where he's going to get his targets in situations where he's going to need to get them, like when we need to drive down the field for a potential go-ahead field goal or a potential go-ahead touchdown in situations, because we just kind of lack to that in the receiving corn, you know, it'll show our offense last year way better with Rashad Bateman in those first, what was it? Three, three games that he played in. I mean, we were scoring and we were getting these long plays, especially that Dolphins game, you know, that we lost, but the offense was like on point for most of it. Like he had an incredible touchdown in that game where he basically just catch and run but then he got hurt and even when Devin Duvernay had to step into that role it was kind of like he was never built for it and we kind of slowly moved Demarcus Robinson into that role which if anything I would have brought Demarcus Robinson back before Nelson Aguilar but again that's just me there's still questions whether the Ravens will go receiver in the draft frankly right now right now I, I don't think the Ravens need to, but there is definitely a lot of talent that you don't need to pick a receiver in the first round either. I get it. You only have five picks, but you can get a receiver in the later round that can end up being, you know, pretty good in itself. This is one of the probably few years where I don't know what the Ravens are going to do in the first round. It's going to be very hard to do a mock draft because of that. But in the end, I like this deal, Odo Beckham Jr. to the Ravens. I feel like with him being more mature and understanding his role, he'll be a good fit. And this pretty much, I think, solidifies that Lamar Jackson will be here because if that wasn't guaranteed to him, then again, like I said, I think he would be off and signing with the New York Jets where they're saying, look, we're getting something done. A deal is going to happen. Just give it until draft day and we will have Aaron Rodgers here. So yeah, and part, you know, I mean, if if Lamar wasn't going to return to the Ravens, if we were going to trade him or whatever, I, if I was Odell, I'd choose Aaron Rodgers over Tyler Hundley, even though I'm a Tyler Hundley supporter. He's a good quarterback, but you know, like, um, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. But I think most people would say, yeah, they would prefer Aaron Rodgers over Tyler Hundley if they were to go play uh, with one of those quarterbacks. But uh, yeah, that's it for me. You can tell me in the comments below what do you think. But until then, stay safe out there and I will catch you all in the next one.